Good morning, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. I hope the good Lord is blessing you on this beautiful day. Today is a very exciting day because I have a lot of incredible information for you all. And it is to show you how soon our Father God and his beautiful son Yeshua is coming to get us and save us and give us deliverance. So um, I'm just going to get straight into the good bit straight away because I know people don't have a long attention span and don't really dig the 40-50 minute videos. So I'm going to do all the cool stuff first so hopefully I can keep your attention and maybe that might let you stay on for the whole video because it's all good. Okay, so I'm just going to show you pretty much what the Lord had me study. Okay, a lot. Okay, so when I tell you these things, it's not just on a whimsical, okay? So I'm going to start pretty much reading my notes for you and um, going through it bit by bit. And um, yeah, but like I said, first things first, let's talk about the blood moon that's coming up on the 19th of November. Brothers and sisters, um, I've written some stuff down here because it's very, very, very significant. Okay. So, on the 19th of November 2021, there shall be a partial lunar eclipse. But the thing is, it's like 97% eclipsed. So, the, how they call it a partial, I don't know. But it is incredible, brothers and sisters. The reason why it's incredible, because the 19th of November is actually falls on the 15th of Cheslev. Now, the 15th of Cheslev in 168 BCE um, was when Antioxus Epiphanes erected a statue of Zeus in the temple, right, in God's temple. And he erected the statue and put his own face on it instead of Zeus's face, right? Ten days later, on the 25th of Keslev, um, which is actually Zeus's birthday, Antioxus actually went into the Holy of Holy, oh, sorry, went to the altar, slaughtered a pig, and then went into the Holy of Holy, sprinkled the pig's blood over that, and then took the broth of the pig and put it over all the Torah scrolls, and then cut them and then burnt them. There, my brothers and sisters, is your abomination of desolation. Now, you need to get a book with the Apocrypha in it, because you can read all about that in... The book of Maccabees. Okay, um, where are we? Book of Maccabees. Okay, we've got Maccabees. Okay, you need to read it. If you know anything about Alexander the Great, it's in that time period. Okay, so when Alexander the Great died, he gave his kingdom to four other people, right? And basically, that's when it all went bad. And one of them, which was the Antiox, Antioctus, I think that's his name. He basically took over um, took over Egypt and then set his sights on Israel and um, made them profane the Sabbath, made them uh, eat food sacrificed to um, idols, you know, hence the reason he slaughtered a pig on the altar. This was meant to be purely abomination, desolation, right? And that will fall on the 19th on, of November on the blood moon, the anniversary of that. Okay, so therefore you have your abomination. Remember, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> it says in, in Matthew and Mark, when you therefore see the abomination stand or standing in the place where it ought not, that's when those in Judea need to flee to the mountains. Okay, and interesting enough, you know, I said 10 days later it was Zeus's birthday. Well, 10 days later, being the 29th of November, is the 74th anniversary of the United Nations Partition Plan for Palestine, okay, Resolution 181. Now, in that um, plan, it mainly focused on the, um, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, right? And the other day when I was doing my research, I wanted to know why it says when those in Judea, um, when they see these things flee to the mountain, why just Judea, right? So I look, Judea is right in the West Bank. So like, you know, Israel's here. Judea is right here next to the ocean. So they're going to be the ones that see these ships come in and they're going to see when the, you know, like it says in Luke, when you see the army surrounding Jerusalem. So brothers and sisters, okay, so <clears throat> we have the 74th anniversary on the 29th 
which is 10 days later than the blood moon. Okay, this is just incredible. This is biblical, brothers and sisters. Okay, and then it's highly significant. You might think 74, what's the big deal? You've got your 70 years that were given to Daniel to prophesy, to make an end to sin, end to transgression, to bring in righteousness, right? An everlasting uh, righteousness and all of that good stuff and then you have the four years which is the fig tree prophecy that's why the fig tree is so important okay you've got the um the the master coming up to the gardener and he's like this tree this fig tree has been here for three years it's given me no fruit i'm going to cut it down the gardener begs please master please don't i'm going to look after it i'm going to fertilize it and i'm going to dig it up and you know and make it really really healthy just give me one more year, then come back in a year. And if it hasn't given you fruit, then I will cut it down. Okay, that is what Father God has done. To He said to his son, go visit the earth, right? And I believe he probably did that in, in 2020. And, and Yeshua says, when I come to this earth, will I find any faith? And he probably didn't find a lot. So he's given us this extra year of grace to 2021 brothers and sisters it's such a significant biblical year 2021 right um, the fact that Luke um, the prophecy in Luke where it says when you see the army surrounding Jerusalem is actually 2120 right so it's 2021 backwards um, okay so that's incredible brothers and sisters that the blue moon uh, sorry the blood moon will fall on 15th of Keslav when the abomination of desolation happened in history and that is why brothers and sisters they take these books out the apocrypha books out the Maccabees it's a history account it's not against scripture it shows the power of one single person if they decide to stand for father God that the whole army of heaven will be behind that person that's why they took it out because they don't want you to see their evil plans which always repeat themselves okay there's nothing new under the sun the evil plan of the abomination of desolation is to be set up and the jews need to see it the non-believers need to see it and the believing church needs to see it and we we have seen it we know what's going on i can't talk about it because everything's getting banned if i mention the certain snake bite we'll call it but you know we're here brothers and sisters you cannot buy or sell and it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and um you know they're they're going to become more mandated and you know over here in australia they've they've now allowed it for um approved it for three to five year olds like over my dead body is anybody touching my children but anyway i'm not going to get onto that like i said <clears throat> it's a very sensitive subject here um okay so Interesting enough, Joe Biden, right? Remember on October the 1st, he said it doesn't matter if it takes six minutes, six days or six weeks, we'll get it done. Okay, that falls on November the 18th and 19th, okay? So, brothers and sisters, you know as well as I know, those who watch, those who search, those who search out the glory of the kingdom of heaven will be revealed. It said this in Amos. It says there's nothing that God will not do that he has not revealed to his servants and prophets, right? There's nothing that he will do. The mysteries in the Bible. Remember the first mystery where, um, where it says the prince and the rulers, if they knew what um, the significance of Christ's sacrifice was, they would have never crucified him. They did not realize that he was he was going to um, cover all of our sins, right? So that to give us a chance for eternal life. Satan and you know Satan and his dudes did not realize that it was going to happen. Otherwise, they never would have crucified him. Because now they're like, oh, great, there's this awesome gift out there now that's free for everyone. What are we going to do? I know what we'll do. We'll tell everybody that, you know, you've got, you can't believe that you're saved. You've really got a question all the time now. Am I good enough? Am I good enough? Brothers and sisters, over the last couple of days, I have come to the complete and full completion and fulfillment of understanding of what John 3.16 really means. I have been brought up like I didn't have a huge church background growing up as a kid. I went a handful of times, but my parents were seven day Adventists, so we kept the Sabbath. We, you know, it was very legalistic and things like that. Now I'm grateful for that knowledge because 
that's what's given me a great love for God's feast days, the Torah. You know, I love the Old Testament. I love history. Um, but, you know, it's just the time that we're living in is unbelievable. And um, it's, it's really literally right at the door. So <clears throat> we have, um, oh, yes. And also, you know how I said the 29th of November will be the day that the um, the pig got slaughtered, right? Um, do you remember com Comet Ison, right? The coming of the sun, right? The last perihelion, which was when it looped around the sun, was the 28th of November, okay? Um, Haggai, chapter 2, verses 18 to 21. Consider now from this day forward and upwards, from the 4 and 20th, day of the ninth month which will be the, the 20 um the 28th day of the ninth month or Kislev, right um even from the day that the foundations of the lord's temple was laid consider it i will shake the heavens and the earth okay and then matthew 24 29 the powers of the heavens will be shaken then shall appear the sign the son of man okay with revelation 6 when they see the sign of the Son of Man, the men are going to be running to the caves, okay? Um, oh, brothers and sisters, we are, I can't, I cannot believe that the salvation just, that's right, I just lost my train of thought for a second because I was talking about um, truly being saved. Brothers and sisters, please hear me now. This is the most important thing I can ever say to you and I feel Father God really wants you to understand this. Whoever shall believe that the Son of God, right, God's one and only begotten Son, whoever believes that he came to earth, walked the earth, preached and ministered, and then was crucified, died for our sins, and he covers us in his blood, was resurrected and then ascended to heaven, whoever believes that shall be saved, okay, shall be saved. And it says to in Joel 2, notice it talks about when the day, um, you know, when the sun's going dark and the moon turns to blood, it'll be a bad day for the unbelievers and for the Jews, okay? But it's going to, it says, but it's going to be a joyous thing for because it's going to be our deliverance day. It is the day that we get delivered. And remember, it says that um, you shall see the blood moon and the sun going black before the great day of the Lord all right then you've got 10 days so you, on the 19th you've got the blood moon so before the great day of the Lord 10 days later okay you've got that anniversary of the first initial impact to to get Israel you know to create it to rebuild it right the first moment so um, the 29th of November 1947 I hope I'm making sense to you, brothers and sisters, because things are really, like, really coming to, um, what's the word, a climax. You know, it's unbelievable how exciting these things are. So I wanted to get that blood moon thing out of the way and, and its significance to the fact that that is the one thing that we're all waiting for, to see the abomination of desolation. And now I want to tell you how important it is to see the difference between the three Gospels um, of Matthew, Mark and Luke. They are literally speaking to three different categories of people and it's just incredible. So now that I've got that cool um, bit of information about the blood moon coming up and the fact that it relates to the abomination of desolation, go get the book of Maccabees, okay? Um yeah, just, this is cool. All right, now I'm going to start with page one. Oh, that's what I was just going to add to that too. And notice, brothers and sisters around the world, okay, La Palma. Um, this is a great mountain burning with fire, okay, brothers and sisters. These things around the world, all these earthquakes and all these volcanoes going off around the world, you know, they'll be like, I heard news today that the earthquakes have settled down on La Palma, right? Straight away, the first thing that came to my mind was when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will happen. 
so many people have been proclaiming that this La Palma is biblical, right? And you watch, it'll settle itself, it'll calm down, and then you'll get your influx of mocking and, oh, you Bible, you know, you doom, gloom, preachers, whatever, rah, rah, rah. You know, there's nothing happened yet again. It's just part of nature. It goes off every 50 years or whatever. Then watch. That mountain is highly significant, brothers and sisters. Remember, um, I don't know how many people know this, and I don't know exactly where it is. I can't think of it at the top of my head, but there's a giant, almost dull-looking porcelain statue, massive, right? And it is facing, uh, I think it might be Chicago or San Francisco, but it is facing La Palma Islands, okay? And she's going, it's just the head, and it's massive, right? I believe that is like a monument of their new world, their reset, and because, you know, they want to create the tsunami to get rid of a heap of people, whatever. And um, I believe that this is some kind of monument that's going to represent the lost because the whole, that thing is called water souls. So to me, in my spirit, that's what I got, that this is some kind of monu that monument that they've built in preparation for the loss of lives, something like a, a trophy, if you want to call it, that's coming from the great destruction. So I don't know when you see when you know when you hear peace and safety. Oh, it's all good. Everyone's safe now. You can come back to the island. Oh my goodness. Okay, because just alone, brothers and sisters, you read in Revelation six. Okay, there's first an earthquake, then the sun goes dark, then the moon turns. Uh, it's um, it turns to blood. Right, that earthquake is because Yeshua is visiting the earth every single time. That Yeshua has had to do something with the earth, there's been an earthquake. Okay, it's just the presence, the ground, and uh, the trees and the mountains, they humble themselves. They're literally shaking and bowing before their master. Okay, so that's really incredible to remember. Now, let's get into the, uh, gosp um, the Gospels, Matthew, right? <laughs> Listen to this. They're going to hand you over to be tortured and be put to death, hated by all nations because of my name. Many will fall away and betray one another. False prophets shall arise and deceive many. Increase of lawlessness and love will grow cold, but to those that endure to the end will be saved. The good news of the gospel will proclaim to the whole world and then the end will come. And then they've got when you see the abomination of desolation stand in the place it ought not to be, then let those in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay, Mark. Okay, it's not because Matthew was tortured and put to death, right? Mark, I'm going to hand you over to the councils. So you'll be beaten in the synagogues. Okay, so it's no longer torture and death. It's handing them over to the council and being beaten. Okay, you'll stand and have to give testimony in the courts about Yeshua. The Holy Spirit will speak for you at this time. Brother will betray brother and father his child and children will have their parents put to death. How often in the Middle, in the Middle Eastern countries... Um, if somebody finds Yeshua and that they turn to Christ, they get put to death. You know, their families don't want anything to do with them. It's really severe over there. The persecution, we have no idea about it, right? We are so blessed that we are so protected and so sheltered from that, that type of horrible persecution. We should never whinge or complain. We should only ever pray for our brothers and sisters that experience that. Um, okay, and then... Um, so, yep, yeah, so they're going to hand you over to the councils, be beaten, you have to stand and give a testimony in the course about Yeshua. Um, yeah, I've read that one. <laughs> okay, so, and when you see the abomination standing, okay, the, in Matthew, it was stand in the place it ought not. Now it is when you see the abomination standing in the holy place, flee to the mountains. Okay, now in Luke, they will arrest you and prosecute you. They will hand you over to the courts. Or prison you'll be brought before governors and judges you will given you'll be given an opportunity to testify for Yeshua don't meditate on what to say because the Holy Spirit will speak for you so that no one can deny its power you will be betrayed by your own family and they'll and some of you may even have to be put to death you will be hated because of my name's sake but brothers and sisters but not a hair of your head will perish do you see this? Okay, 
Luke is for us, brothers and sisters, for the believing church, for the believing group of people. Luke is for us. Not a hair on your head will perish. The only thing, brothers and sisters, and I, if I can not make anything more remem um, in remembrance in your mind, patience. Patience is virtue. You have no idea how significant it is just to have patience. That's all we need. Belief and patience to see it through. That's all he's asking us to do, brothers and sisters. This is so exciting. We are not going to see we're in the great tribulation right now, right? We're in the great tribulation. You you might not believe me, but I'll show you. I'll get to my my things and show you and prove it to you by scripture. We're in the great tribulation. And I believe very much that the 19th of November on this blood moon will be the before the great day of the Lord, whether that's 10 days. Oh, and those 10 days that are in between those two things, notice in Revelations it says <clears throat> in 2.10, I think, that the devil will cast some of you into into tribulation and prison for 10 days. <coughs> Have faith and even unto death and you will receive your crown. Are that is that the non-believers or um, I don't know. But that's just the way that that works so perfectly with these two events that are happening. And one thing I wanted to know is to remember that in Matthew, Mark and Luke, right, it says that the moon shall not give her light. But in Revelation, it says the moon shall be turned to blood. Where else does it say blood? In Joel, has anyone ever wondered that maybe that's why it doesn't mention the blood bit in the Gospels? Is because the Jews know the Old Testament, right, the Torah. They know. So when they see the moon turned to blood and the sun going black, they will know that this is a prophecy from Joel coming true, that the great day of the Lord is about to come, right? And this is where you get, I think maybe this is where you get that timeline of when it says there's going to be the great earthquake, the sun will go black, the moon will go as blood, the, fall, the, the stars will fall from heaven like an untimely fig tree, right? And then um, the... Um, and then this, because it doesn't say in Revelations, then you'll see the sign of the Son of Man. It only talks about that in the Gospels. So you're going to have this earthquake, the moon going blood, the sun going black, and then you're going to have the revelation of um, Yeshua. Whatever his sign is, which I believe it's like Nibiru or Planet X or some kind of planetary system, right? Something that the whole world will see the sign of the Son of Man coming. There is going to be a period. It's not just going to be like, doo -doo -doo, rapture, push, done, tribulation, let's go. It's not going to be like that, brothers and sisters. I think this 10 days will be this, the real closeness coming, the real, the, ch the last chance, brothers and sisters. In You see so many Catholic prophecies, right? They're very, 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 very similar. A lot of them, they talk about there'll be something in the sky that the whole world will see. And everybody will get a chance to acknowledge that God is true, Yeshua is true, everything they've been told has been a lie, and then they're going to have the choice from there to go, oh, I better get right or, <coughs> or no, nah, I'm just going to stay on the path. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Who knows? God is fair. God is just. He may just give us that chance. He may give us that little bit of maybe those 10 days that we see these great significant wonders and signs in the heavens and the earth being shaken. Maybe that is a little a little warning, well, a little warning, a massive warning. But how many more people will be saved in those 10 days? Those people who have been sitting on the fence and that is why in Revelations he says, How I wish you were not lukewarm, either be cold or hot. But if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. That is, that's heavy, brothers and sisters. You do not want to be lukewarm. But maybe, maybe in God's good graces, is there a time frame, a little 10-day gap 
just like in the you know when the books were open over the days of, from um, Feast of Trumpets to the Day of Atonement, there's the ten days of awe. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, this could very well look. I've been here since 2014, right? Saying that the rapture is going to happen every year. I know I'm a date setter, and I just am only going with what Father God is telling me. And so many people need it's the encouragement, it's the excitement. Whether you think, oh, you can't put a day on it or not, or you know, nobody knows the day or the hour. <clears throat> and I'll address that verse again because there's people that haven't heard this. But the day that no man knows the day of the hour of is the day the heavens and earth pass away. Okay, brothers and sisters, you've got to read it in context. It says, the heavens and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day, no man knows, not even the angels. Okay, and the insertion of the sun is in italics. So it was added to that. Okay, the son and the father, uh, like, like you can have more of a connection. Of course he knows, he knows. Right? That's why he tells us to watch. How cruel would it be to tell us to watch? And if we're not found watching, we're going to, you know, we're doomed. How cruel would it be to tell you to watch if there's nothing to watch for? Or if he was just going to go, boom, oh, hey, how you going? I'm here. <coughs> <coughs> the reason many brothers and sisters have had an influx of rapture dreams, tsunami dreams, end of the world dreams, FEMA dreams, tribulation dreams, is because he is at the door brothers and sisters he is at the door and I believe very much that those 10 days will be a wonderful that's where your revival will be that's where people sit you know whoever seen revival and visions and stuff like that that is probably where it's going to be because we need we've seen so much destruction and so much hatred and so much evil through movies propaganda whatever we've been desensitized we need a global earthquake. We need the sun to go blood red. We need the, the sun, uh, sorry, the sun to go black and the moon to go blood red. We need that to shake us out of our coma. And maybe this is everything that we've been looking for. And to be honest, I would rather it happen this way because the, my... I cannot wait to be raptured and taken and to start eternity, right? But obviously, like you and me and so many people around the world, you get a little bit terrified of the fact of your loved ones and things like that and, and the fact that, you know, just it is overwhelming sometimes to think because no one's ever been, you know, none of you, you or me or brothers and sisters, we haven't been raptured before. We don't know. We haven't experienced this part of history before or... No one knows what to expect. And that's why it's, you know, it's a little bit anxious, right? So I would <clears throat> much rather that a global earthquake came and we could all be like, this is it. Without a doubt, we wouldn't, <clears throat> we wouldn't second guess it. Everybody who was on the fence would quickly jump over to the right side of the fence. Oh, brothers and sisters, this is absolutely incredible. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the order of events. Through all of my studies, I've been able to match through from all the Gospels to Revelation, from Joel, Ezekiel, Zechariah, Jeremiah, Daniel. I've been able to all link them together and finally see the um, finally see in action really what they meant by precept upon precept line upon line that's where you'll find everything everything is in the bible you need to just puzzle piece it together right it's just incredible so we've got revelation 6 that's where we are right now okay we've got the first seal which is the white horse you know that the word bow means toxin the word crown means corona so that's the pandemic right <clears throat> That was a white horse. He came out to conquer. He thought he could conquer us all by, you know, trying to change our DNA and whatnot, whatnot. The second seal is the bright red horse. It's very important too, not just to say red horse, because it's bright red, which initiates blood, okay? And that's because when the white horse came, he gave us 
something that was to desolate us, all right? And that was to remove the God gene, basically, and research that. Bill Gates, God gene, vaccine, okay? Now, um, so that's why the second seal is to take peace from the earth and people start killing each other, okay? With lots of bloodshed, okay? Um, the third seal is the black horse. That is his scales, okay? He's holding things in the balance. He's weighing things in the balance. And he's also talking about the food shortages and the famine that's coming, okay? And we, everybody can see that. Look, there is, even the um, army generals or whatever are saying, we're going to hold these ships back out, all the freights, out in the ocean until everybody gets their jab. You know, it's, it's right in front of our face. We can't deny it anymore where we are in time, okay? Then you've got your fourth seal, which is the pale green, the sickly coloured um, horse, right? Its rider's name is Death and all of Hades follows, okay? Now this is where the side effects from the snake bite will come in. When you're going to start seeing people, um, the, the side effects and um, from, you know, rashes to clots to seizures to um, strokes to death um, to, to eventually seeing a full change of a child of God having the image of God to something that's become desolate okay um, right that's yeah it's a terrible okay it's it's happening now and you see the it's a falling away it's the falling away from God's image from God's promises from everything that he told us he told us in Psalms 91 that you're going to see these things on the left and right. Thousands, thousands of people will fall. Nothing will touch you. I promise you, I've got your back. You are sheltered by the Most High. Then I read to you before that not even a hair on your head will perish. So, brothers and sisters, we can't keep crying out to the people who've taken it. It's It's been done. They've made the choice. They have made the choice. Anyway, we'll keep going. The fifth seal is an incredible one. I believe very much this is the trigger for the process of this all. For the process of Father God saying to Yeshua, all right, this is it. This is the time you need to go and get your kids. Okay. You've got the fifth seal, the souls under the altar. Okay. They are, they are there from, um, what do you call it, from Abel. Right? The, the shedding of Abel's innocent blood, it says that the blood, blood cried out from the ground since his death. That's the beginning of time, right? Has Abel's blood plus all the other, other innocents, all the babies that have been sacrificed, all the babies that have been aborted, all the good people, all the martyrs, all the saints that have been killed, whatever. <clears throat> all the people that have died in Christ, okay? Um... Maybe, maybe, okay, this has just come to me and I feel like Father God is just pointing me. It's actually the souls under the elders are the ones that have been martyred. Martyred for the name of Yeshua and also um, unjustly, right? And everybody else who's just died in the Lord, right, just going about their lives, believing in Father God, believing in Yeshua and has died, they're, they're resting, okay, they're in rest, but I believe that the martyred souls and the innocent souls are the ones that are under the altar of God, and the reason I say that is because a little bit further down, he says you have to wait until your fellow servants and brethren just will be killed just like yourselves, okay, until that number's complete and fulfilled, so maybe there's a special group of people, if you give your life just like Yeshua gave, maybe that makes sense to me, right? If you were to give your life being persecuted for Christ, then that, that seems fitting that God takes your soul and brings you, you know, and keeps you under his altar. Who knows? There could be everybody that died in Christ. I don't know that. But what I'm saying is I believe that this is the trigger to the start of the process of the rapture. And um, because they are calling out, how long, God? How long? Why are you not avenging our blood? you know, on those that have tried to kill us. And God's like, here, have some white robes. What does that tell you, brothers and sisters? It means that we're very close to the dead in Christ 
will rise first okay you've got dead people or they're not dead but the souls receiving their white robes but then he says wait a little season just rest for a little season and I believe that little season is 10 days I I don't know I think we may have to go maybe through 10 days of just this seeing this earthquake seeing the suns oh, I don't know I don't know but I know it's highly significant this blood moon okay and okay so you've got um, okay in Joel right okay sorry sorry back to seal five um, so you've got you know the souls under the altar resting I've got their white robes on waiting for the the number to be fulfilled right and then you have your great earthquake your sun going black your moon is blood okay and as I said before the the moon does not give her light in all, all um, three of the Gospels right but in Revelations it turns to blood just like in Joel so I th believe that's a sign for the Jews so that they recognize that the prophecy from Joel is now being fulfilled okay and um, and then it says the stars fell like untimely figs again with the fig trees right everything's with the fig trees now you know the stars can mean angels it's quite often it means angels and and I believe this is very much where the war in heaven happens okay and I have a completely different I believe I've been given a completely different view on the sign in heaven and the um of the you know the woman and the dragon in heaven okay just hear me out I believe when the stars f fall like untimely figs it's actually the war in heaven okay so Michael's because it says in Daniel right that at that time Michael shall stand up and then it also says that Mike with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God that the archangel is Michael right I believe he stands up and he announces that the time is here all right because at the moment devil the devil is going back and forth accusing us brothers and sisters day and night right he's going back and forth I reckon when Michael stands up when God, when father God has given the the signal for this to go ahead Michael's gonna stand up Satan will be aware he's like right this is it he's gonna gather those one-third of the angels and they're gonna fight against Michael and his angels right they're gonna battle that the Satan and his angels are gonna lose they're gonna be cast down to earth I believe that is part of your great earthquake brothers and sisters and Okay, so this is where I want to get into um, what I mean by um, the war in heaven and things like that being here. So Satan comes down, he gets cast down, we have this great big earthquake, whatever. Satan looks up and he's wrath. He's like, oh, now I know I've only got a tiny bit, tiny bit of time left, three and a half years. That's not long in, in the span of, you know, the last 6,000 years. So he's come down. He is literally that's why it says he's where is it I don't want to I don't want to mince my words just give me two seconds okay listen to this <clears throat> his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear child okay so Satan right he's just been thrown down with his angels right there's this earthquake the moon's happening he knows his time short he knows this is it there's no going back now right he is a, he's standing in front of those people he knows are about to be taken the believers he knows this he knows that all believers in the whole world dead and alive will be taken right so he says he stands in front of the woman who was about to bear a child right who's about to give birth this whole thing is about laboring and the birth pains and about being about to be delivered right delivered okay so this satan he's just been thrown down cast cast down angry sees the whole body of christ and he goes to it you know that he might devour her as soon as it was born okay so he's like i'm gonna take you i'm gonna try and keep you down down here with me if i'm cast down here you're staying here with me right and she gave birth to a son 
a male child, Yeshua, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, right? That's the millennium. But her child was snatched away. Brothers and sisters, do you see this? Do you see this? And taken to God and his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God for 1,260 days. Okay, brothers and sisters, how easy is that? Okay. Okay. Souls under the altar. How long, God? How long, God? Okay. Michael stands up. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Devil's like, all right, here we go. We're going to fight you, Michael. They had this big bingo, right? Michael, um, Father God, cussed Satan down with his angels. He gets thrown down extremely rough, ready to go for the bride of Christ because he knows that they're about to be delivered. So he's going, right, I'm not going to let you do anything. And it says he tries to let out a flood. And that could be where the tsunami comes from, brothers and sisters. When he gets cast down, he may very well trigger that tsunami okay and maybe that's why it says you know and then he tried to uh capture the woman uh, and take her down by the flood but then it says you know the earth helped the woman and opened her mouth and took all the water so brothers and sisters have no have no fear nothing will happen to you if you believe we have been this is a special time we live in we're not special people that we um deserve this but we were chosen for this time this time period to have this supernatural protection over us and it is incredible brothers and sisters so how cool is this right okay and so you've got the devil coming down with his angels trying to hold back or or stop the um what do you call it the the uh, I can't even think of the word. This is a wonderful event of the rapture being taken where God's children shall be delivered. Um, and he's trying to, um, you know, to stop this from happening by creating a flood or a tsunami. Oh, brothers and sisters, and this is why the Palmer has all the little grid patterns because it's like strategically being placed. You watch this peace and safety thing. It just keeps coming back. Okay. And it is just incredible because the very next thing, okay is the four angels come down holding the four winds of the corners of the earth and holding all the doom back all the wrath back holding it back because here comes the ceiling of the 144,000 messianic jews and they need to be messianic jews because how else is the world going to recognize what just happened to it and you know and people want to know about christ now that's why it said um, that people will be clinging on people's legs saying do you know the lord do you know the lord you know the people these 144,000 people will be able to minister and fulfill the prophecy where it says and the gospel of the kingdom of heaven shall go into the entire world and then the end will come okay so i mean you know it just makes sense to me to say that that's that's literally the um the timeline okay we've got the pandemic we've got the um you know the bloodshed we've got the famine and the food shortages we've got the sickness that's coming from the you know the pandemic then you've got the souls just saying enough please father god please just how long please avenge our blood for us please and you know that's going to um you know that's going to move father god and he's going to be like, all right Let's get the show on the road. Michael's going to stand up. He's going to, um, yeah, the trump of God. Oh, my goodness, brothers and sisters. I can't believe this. It's literally like we're living in the greatest movie ever made. And we're on the good side. Okay. All right. So, yep, you've got your four angels holding back the wind, right? And nothing can be touched. Nothing can be hurt until those messianic Jews are sealed. Okay. And then, brothers and sisters... Then, brothers and sisters, after this, there was a great multitude that no man could number from every nation, tribe, and people standing before the throne and the Lamb with white robes and palm branches in their hands. These, uh, who are these? Robed in white. And where did they come from? And then he said to me, these are those who come out of great tribulation. And they washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. Okay, the fact that it says they made their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. We did nothing. 
We did nothing. It is the blood of Yeshua that covers us, that saves us and delivers us. Okay, we did absolutely nothing. Okay, um, it's if you believe, brothers and sisters, I have to reaffirm this. If you believe, brothers and sisters, remember if you have faith as small as a mustard seed. Someone said something the other day, and I'm like, oh man, this is incredible. Remember that it's uh, the verse in the Bible. I should have looked it up. I'm sorry, but remember it says, um, you'll be like the least in oh, whoever um, does these things and teaches men to do so, you'll be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. But ever anybody who teaches the commandments um, and does them will be the greatest, or something like that. But the point I'm trying to make is least and greatest, they're still in heaven, brothers and sisters. So you can be a pretty crappy Christian, but if you still believe and you still love him with all your heart, you will be in heaven. This is like the greatest news ever. When I'm, What I was trying to get before coming up from a legalistic upbringing, you know, with um, the seven-day Adventist and Sabbath and the strict rules and stuff, my, my parents... Uh, always saying to me, especially my mum, oh, I hope that, you know, I'm worthy to be saved. Oh, how can you live like that? I'm so thankful to Father God that he has revealed this to me, like, in full completeness now, and I fully understand. I always thought, and where it says in Revelations, um, um, what is it? <clears throat> right? Yeah. The Gospel of Luke is for us, the believing church, and the church of Thyatira is a letter to us. Okay? Um, so the Gospel of Luke is talking about many denominations will arise preaching Jesus, but have not the Spirit. You know how it says, many shall come saying, I am, I am Christ, and deceive many? I truly believe that that means many will come saying, um, saying, you know, I believe in God and I'm preaching about God and Jesus and stuff like that, but their message isn't isn't proper. So they're deceiving people, right? I don't believe that's people coming and saying, "Look at me, I'm Jesus Christ," because there's not there. There's a handful of people in the world who have pulled that off, right? Who've said, "I I'm Jesus," and have like you know a few hundred people or a thousand people following them. But it, it's not something that you see all the time. So it has to be denominations all around the world preaching that they know Jesus and they know God but are deceiving people because of their their um, interpretation of the scriptures because they're not getting the wisdom from the Holy Spirit they're getting it from the worldly like Bible colleges and and seminars and pre-written sermons you know the the things that have stuck through the decades and centuries where we just can't change out of a, do a certain doctrine okay so then you've got rumors of wars um, these things must happen, but the end's not yet. With kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, great earthquakes in diverse places, famine, pestilence, fearful sights, and great signs from heaven. This is all in Luke, right? Completely different than Matthew and Mark. Before all these, you shall be brought to the courts, or prisons, or governments, and shall turn you, and they shall turn you in for a testimony. Do not meditate on what to say, for the Holy Spirit shall speak with you. And I'm having beautiful birdies speaking with me right now. Okay, I believe very much that these people getting take, taken into prison in the courts and before the governors are all these people around the world that are standing up for our fe uh, freedoms and this the vaccine mandates and just the, the evil that's going on in the world. You know, these people are getting arrested and in prison and they're speaking in the courts and these words that come out of their mouth are literally from the Holy Spirit because they're so powerful and no one can deny them, right? I believe this is Luke. Luke is us. And you shall be hated among all men for my name's sake. How true is that? But also we're very, very blessed. And we will be very blessed for that. You'll be betrayed by your own family. And some will try to put you to death. Again, like I said, you know, the people um, that find Yeshua, um, you know, that come over from other cultures, right? Some people are really strict about this kind of stuff in other cultures and other religions. If you want to go to Christianity, it is, it's, it's seen as evil and it seems like something you should be stoned to death or put to death for. Okay? Um, but notice it says uh, they will cause you 
to try to put you to death. Okay, that means they're going to try to do that. But because then I reiterate what I said before, but not a hair on your head shall perish. Okay, Psalms 91. In your patience possesses ye your soul. That's what I was trying to get at before. That's all we have to do, brothers and sisters. No more worrying. No more being scared if you're worthy enough. No, no one's worthy enough, brothers and sisters, but it is the blood of Yeshua that covers us, that Father God will see when we stand before his throne. He will see Yeshua, his, his gift, his sacrifice, and say, okay, you're accepted. Because, you know, we got the ticket. we got the golden ticket, brothers and sisters. Okay? Now, this is the message to Thyatira. This is so important, okay? I know your works, love, faith, and service, and patient endurance. Okay, so I just want to touch quickly on the works part, okay? Everyone's always like, oh, you know, we, we, uh, we're not saved by works. We're, we're only saved by faith. Yes, absolutely. But when you love somebody... You know, when you love your, your partner, you love your kids, but you help them do stuff, you know, you clean up around the house, you whatever, you spend time with them, like your family, right? That's what he's talking about, your works. When we talk to each other and, and spread the the message, that's works. When we go and um, pay for someone's, you know, groceries or, you know, make a meal for the homeless or do something nice for the less fortunate, that is works, brothers and sisters. You will go to heaven if you believe. But you'll be much, much greater in heaven if you gave yourself here on earth for the walk for Yeshua. If you walked like him and carried your cross and did everything that God loves. You know, he loves joy and spirit and faith and hope and goodness. Looking after the poor, looking after the widows, protecting the innocent, you know, the animals. <coughs> if you can't look after people or you don't want to do anything for people... Look after the animals. Help them. If you have $10 a week spare, you know, there's a lot in lots of uh, shopping centres, well, at least here in Australia, there's big bins that you can go and put, you know, a bag of dog food in or a can of dog food or cat food or bird seed or something like that that um, pet shelters will take once a week. You know, how like we can all spare a couple of dollars. Imagine if we all did that and bought some dog food or, you know, <coughs> or a can of baked beans for a food pantry. Just each of us, if we did one, this is what our good works are. Okay. So, Father God says, I know your works, your love, your faith, your servants, your service, and your patient endurance. See, there's that thing again, brothers. We have to be patient. I know it's forever like, oh, come on, when is it? It's, we're always getting excited, then it comes and goes, and I don't know how much longer I can do this. I'm already hearing people going, if 2021 comes and goes, that's it, I'm over it, everything's been a lie. You know, I, I get it, but it's not. It has to make you feel like this because it is the pinnacle of the end. Okay, there's going to be, the devil is going to attack big time and that is putting crap in people's ears like that. God will not um, go back on his promise. He will not go back on his word. He's good to his word. He said it from the beginning. He'll do it at the end. We know this. We know this. So have faith and just have patient endurance. Your last work is greater than your first. Now, isn't that obvious? You know, we started this big thing in 2040 with the blood moon tetras coming. That was really woke us up, right? That was 14, oh, sorry, uh, seven years ago conveniently, that woke everybody up to God's holy feast days, to what, um, to the Old Testament. A lot of people didn't even read the Old Testament up until, you know, 2014 when people were like, blood moons, what's that got to do with anything? You know, um, okay, so that's why it says here, your last works will be greater than your first. So everything that we're doing now, brothers and sisters, everybody, all the watchmen, watchwomen on the wall, people sharing the good news of the gospel, sharing the good news of the rapture, of the blessed hope, you know, telling everybody around the world, this is wonderful, there's things about to come, and Yeshua is coming home very soon, coming to get us very soon. That, you know, that's your good works, okay? And that's the works that are greater than the works you did first, okay? But this is one thing he has against us, and it makes sense why this is the letter to our church of Thyatira. But you tolerate that woman Jezebel, who beguiled my servants to eat food sacrificed to idols. 
Now, Jezebel represents Babylon's sin. The USA, I'm not talking about the people, right? I love you all. I'm talking about the system. I'm talking about the, um, you know, the Antichrist spirit, right? All the jewels, Beverly Hills, Hollywood, celebrities, the elites, all that. That all sort of stems from the US, right? And, um, and worldly things. It says, come out of her, my people. And it's not, just, it's not meaning come out of America. It means come out of the world. Separate yourself. Don't be going out to pu uh, pubs and clubs and stuff anymore, brothers and sisters. We don't have time for this anymore. Like, let's not kid ourselves. It's not about just doing what you like and whatever. We're, we're down to the last nitty-gritty of this. We're down to... It's like we've got a massive final exam, a final life exam. You want to study for this one. You can't just wing it on the last, you know, five minutes before the test starts. So let's just get out of the world. You've got any secret sins, you know what they are. Okay? Mine... Mine are, what, what, you know, we're supposed to confess our sins to each other. And mine, I've struggled. As you can see in my earlier videos, I've always struggled with weed, big time. I still smoke it at the moment. Um, I, I use it as an excuse, you know, saying that God created all the green herbs of the fields, you know, and it's, uh, I, have a, I have a bit of a problem with uh, wine. And I... I Really, in the next probably next day or so, I'm going to get back into another 10 day fast, Daniel fast again, because I'm going to. When the uh, Feast of Trumpets happened in October, um, from the 28th, I think, or the 27th of September to the 7th of October, I fasted really well for 10 days, you know, just had water um, and soups and didn't have one withdrawal for wine or weed and then stupidly I went back into it but that's what happens you know but that doesn't matter brothers and sisters I'm here to confess my sins to you this is something that some things I want to work on I've got to get rid of the alcohol first because the weed to me because I've been smoking it for so long and this I'm not glorifying or making an excuse but I've been smoking since I was 15 and I'm 40 now um, it, it doesn't really, it's more like sort of has the same effects as cigarette smoke would have on me, right? But I do believe that the Holy Temple resides in me, so therefore I always worry that I am, um, I'm worried that I'm like polluting the Holy Temple, right? So that is, that is my, um, my struggles and my things, but now I'm so happy and so grateful to know that it's just my belief and my patience that will get me into the eternal kingdom. Um, these things, giving up the weed and the wine, these things I do because I love him and I want to become more clearer and more closer to him. But I will still get to heaven, brothers and sisters, and so will you. So will you. This is the most beautiful revelation. It's the most simplest and most old school revelation there is, is that... Um, you know, that you're saved. You're saved by belief and patience. How beautiful is that? What a good God we've got. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So, um, I continue on with that. I'm talking about Jezebel to, you know, come out of her, my people. Um, we must come completely out of the worldly things of this world, becoming clean and sober and full of the Spirit of God. And it, and it says, I will give you what your works deserve. So in other words, here he is with the reap what you sow. So if you don't come out of the world, then you're going to end up reaping what you sow from that. You know, you've got to make your choice. It's hard because it's also like, where are your idols? That's why it's the number one commandment. Okay, nothing should be above God. And if we're like, if someone's got um, an issue, and that's why I did, I got rid of it for 10 days, you know, the weed and the wine, because I wanted to show God, I was like, you are so much more important to me than this worldly crap, and I want to show you that. And I was really, really proud of myself that I did that and and could show him, and I, it, was, it was him, it was all him, not, all glory goes to God, because he took those withdrawals away and made it super easy for me. But what I'm saying is we do these things to show our love for him, not because it saves us, 
okay brothers and sisters so know that you're everybody out there is struggling with different things whether it's porn whether it's drugs whether it's alcohol whether it's shopping you know gluttony whatever it may be brothers and sisters all I'm gonna to say to you is just give it to Father God say I'm struggling and I really love you so much and I really would like to just show you that you are important to me and I'll go just start I'll go one day without it okay start small but just try it's the heart intent that God wants and God sees and God loves okay um, but and then it goes on to say this beautiful thing too but if you don't mingle with the world or if you don't understand the deep things of Satan actually says in the Bible I will give you no other burden so hold fast what you have so this is what I was talking about. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, right? Until I come. And everybody who conquers and continues, so patience, right? And overcomes, does not fall in a way. I will also give them authority over the nations to rule them with a rod of iron. To the one who conquers, I will also give the morning star. Brothers and sisters, that's your millennial reign. We're going to rule and reign with Yeshua for a thousand years. And that is our gift for overcoming you know these uh these things of the world so um i'm just going to briefly go through my notes again because i'm seeing that i've gone way over time again so yeah just to recap that blood moon on the 19th of november okay which is the anniversary of the fifth which is the 15th of kislev which uh was when the statue got erected right antioctus erected the statue in the temple and then on the 29th of November which was the 25th of Kessler it's when he slaughtered the pig on the altar okay that's your abomination and desolation brothers and sisters and then you've got your uh, also on the 29th of November is the uh, UN petition plan adopted okay that's 74 years ago so you got 70 years in Daniel completion and then he gives the four years grace period right the fig tree parable Three years I came to look for fruit, there was nothing. Please let me look after it. I'll, I'll fertilize it, look after it. Give me one more year. And this is so important, right? This last year has been so important for so many of us. How many of us have drawn closer to God? How many of us have left and separated ourselves from from the world? Okay. <clears throat> so yes. Um that's incredible, brothers and sisters. So yep, so you got seventy four years perfect. And, um, yeah, the fact that Joe Biden, you know, with his six minutes, six days, six weeks, ending up on the 29th of November as well. So, yeah, again, you know, we're going to have this, this souls under the altar triggering this whole process. Um, Michael's going to stand up. We're going to have a big, the great war in heaven, right? Satan's going to be cast down. And um, that's why, that's why whole of heaven celebrates, right? But then it says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Notice the Bible never calls us believing people the inhabitants of the earth. Okay? It's always children of God or Israel or, you know, the tribe or, or whatever. Okay? Um, the devil has been cast down and he had hoped to overcome the... Um, the promise of the deliverance by creating a flood or the tsunami and basically the earth is going to help the woman and it's going to suck up the water and God's going to snatch away the woman to a place that he prepared for us for three and a half years and then your, your 144,000 uh, Messianic Jews will go and fulfill the prophecy of you know you're going to spread the gospel to the whole world and then the end will come and then, like, in those, so I believe maybe that 144,000 represents the two witnesses, right? It's literally God's uh, lampstands, right? They stand up, they stand before him, and they're going to tell people, and they're going to give the testimony of Yeshua, of God, of all these things were true, and try and turn whoever they need to turn back, or it's just as a witness because it doesn't look like many people are going to be saved from this point onwards okay that's why the, this gift of the tiny little bit of belief will get you into heaven is so important so like 
incredibly significant you have no idea because if that wasn't the case we'd all be doomed okay we'd all be doomed so i really believe that that's we are in mid tribulation like uh, we're at the end of the great tribulation about to go into the wrath the last three and a half years which is complete wrath yeah so just i don't know sorry i've had a little break so i can't remember what i was talking about but i'm pretty sure i was talking about the um the 144,000 um, Messianic Jews, um, I believe that could possibly be what represents the two witnesses, right? I don't think there's actually going to be two Jewish guys walking around, but um, I don't know. Who knows? It could well be exactly like it says. It's to me. I, I take the Bible quite literally. Actually, a lot of the things I don't think are some symbolic. I think they're actually very real, like very well. Um, described almost to the point that we think it's a trick question or something like that sorry my partner's soaring downstairs um but anyway so i'm gonna wrap this video up can i just summarize and i've probably summarized a million times already but this is such incredible news um so you've got the your blood moon okay your blood moon happening on the 19th of november uh which is um i'm pretty sure it's around 7 30 p.m on the 18th for us here in australia and you guys over in new york that sort of area i think it's around between two and four in the morning on the 19th so it's an incredible eclipse right the fact that it goes between two days the 18th and the 19th the fact that it's the longest eclipse in the century three and a half hours brothers and sisters what does that say three and a half month that uh, years like it says in revelations it's literally giving us an eclipse for the time period ahead you know the tribulation period for three and a half years with three and a half hours uh a lunar eclipse it's going to be incredible brothers and sisters um it's going to be very significant and then the 10 days later then you've got that you know the un petition plan um is that going to be your 10 days of awe in between that is that going to is the um the blood moon going to be you know the great day the blood moon and the the sun going black before the great day of the father god you know the day of the lord wow we're going to see some things coming up absolutely brothers and sisters absolutely but have no fear let me end on this i think a lot of us worry about our family and our children you know the left behind i think that's this is so awesome for me to be able to leave that theory behind now there's not going to be left behind if they believe right if they believe if you brought them up for, for one if they're under the age of accountability all the kids they're going to go if it says in in the bible right it says in is it matthew i, I believe that um the believing wife or the believing husband will save the family brothers and sisters you have to understand that he does he's not a god of confusion he doesn't just say these things and, and put fine print in and, and stuff like that your faith your research your love for father god will cover your family okay i mean if they don't believe if they're atheists and they don't believe in god obviously the gift isn't there for them right but if you believe, then the more than likely there's going to be some belief in the family, right? There's going to be, your kids are going to believe. Um, just spend this time with your children. Teach them about, get a cool Bible stories for the kids, you know. Watch Bible things, animations on YouTube. There's plenty of cool ones out there that aren't like full on or boring, whatever. Show them the gift that yeshua gave each and every one of us it's for their souls as well you know but mothers and fathers please brothers and sisters mums and dads please just know that your faith can cover your family it's it's this time is about covering about sheltering about um leaning on father god like like nothing else and all things are possible through him okay he loves us he created us that's why it says there's a, a number that no man could count, just like he gave the promise to uh, Moses and Abraham about his descendants. Be like sands on the on the sea, you know, no man can count them, like stars in the sky, no man can count them. Okay, that's how many people will be saved. 
it's it, it's a good news it is really a good news all we need to do brothers and sisters is have faith have believe and have patience our t we're, we're nearly there just have patience just in, relax sit back and enjoy now these last days enjoy your family be nice to everyone make right make the little things right that you know you've done wrong to people fix all those little things now like we were supposed to do in the days of all you know it's the time for repentance is now because soon it will be no longer just please brothers and sisters have faith you are worthy if you believe you are invited to the kingdom of heaven okay know that know that when you see these things your redemption draweth near look up it is just about here okay i'm gonna leave it there brothers and sisters may god bless you and this is so exciting. Blood moon on the 19th of November. Here we go. Your redemption draweth near. I love you. God bless you.